as I was thinking about uh, today's interest group, um, both yesterday and this morning, I was thinking about it's, this is kind of one of those areas of evergreen that, that often seems um, unapproachable by uh, people who deal more specifically, more firsthandedly with patrons and, and things like that. And, and reporting be, kind of becomes this, mm, I don't know, secondary is the right word, but less of a priority until it becomes like a huge priority. And that um, while the things that we talk about in here should be of practical importance to each of you uh, in some manner, the other part of it is that because you have been involved in just by showing up, uh, the reports interest group that you also have then the opportunity to kind of act as ambassadors for reporting and, and um, as you talk about it with colleagues and peers and, and people within your organization to hopefully kind of demystify it a little bit. It, it's, it's never going to be completely uncomplicated just because we're dealing with uh, some pretty massive databases that involve uh, pretty extensive tables with all sorts of data that can be pulled. And so it, there's necessarily complexity in there, but um, just having some exposure to things takes a little bit of the mystery out of it. So I, I do hope that as we go forward that it, it'll, it helps you, of course, in, in your job, but then also encourages you to encourage others. So whether to be here or to just use the interfaces. So we'll go ahead and get started. You are welcome to have mics or cameras on for this. This is a much more informal gathering than a um, class would be, despite the fact that there will be, uh, hopefully, so, some learning going on. You also have the opportunity to ask questions um, as they arise. You can throw those over into chat, which I am monitoring, um, or you can, uh, I would say probably raise your hand just so that I can like know that it's a cue for me to shut up um, and, and, and let you have time for your question or conversation um, or, you know, just speak up too, that's fine. Okay, I'm Ruth, most of you know me. That's my contact information. I will say you're welcome to call this phone number. I do return voicemail um, or missed calls, but I don't always hear that phone ring. Email is by and large the best way to contact me. And I have that open all the time, except for when I'm in a meeting like this and re respond as quickly as possible um, while I'm in the office. So, and as quickly as I can in the morning as well, if you have a question about anything. So the first thing that we're going to talk about um, this morning is just kind of a, uh, a little bit of a takeaway from the Evergreen International Conference, which happened at the end of May. I had it on the, the kind of agenda from the last reports interest group that, that we would do that. And as I was going back through this and trying to pick out the things that... Um, I thought were the most important from here. What I kept coming back to was I wish that everybody could go to the pre-conference that was led by Chris Sharp from Georgia, uh, from Georgia Pines. Uh, and thankfully, those that pre-conference was recorded and has been uploaded to YouTube. And so I have a link here and I'm... Uh, and I will make sure to, to send these slides. Actually, let me just see if I can get this slide deck to you real quick. It's going to get ugly for a second. Uh, 
and I'll just, I know sometimes I get a sidetracked and don't get these emails out as quickly as, as I should. So there's a link to these slides and so that you have access to all of these links in here. Um, And I'm going to not actually play that here. So this is a uh, two hour long session that Chris did. Uh, and, and this is kind of an encore pre-conference, um, maybe even an encore of an encore because he does such a good job of explaining uh, how to use the reporter, how to build reports, clone reports, um, organize outputs and all sorts of things. So I highly encourage you to watch that. You may not be able to watch it all in one sitting, but if you can, uh, cool, and um, refer back to it. The other thing, oh, good gravy. I'm clicking on the wrong spot here. That he included with this pre-conference is the session outline and that sounds like it's going to be some kind of agenda, and to a certain extent it is, but it is so much more than that. Um, again, you have this link in the, um, the slides over there, but if you scroll down here, um, you can see, of course, the topics that he covers in there, but then he has this pretty amazing um, I like to call it a cheat sheet. I'm not sure that that's the right way, but it's kind of just lists and lists of um, paths to follow for sources, um, some explanation of some of the sources, the easiest place to get some of the information. So I highly encourage you to take a look through this document and you can see it's 43 pages long. Um, you can, you can of course, use uh, your control F if you're looking for a specific thing in there, keeping in mind that a lot of these, and so we do have table names in here and then columns within those tables, um, they may be similar. I mean, circulation gets used over and over and over again, and uh, item gets used over and over again. So the the find may or may not be helpful, but um, definitely take a look through that and see um, see what's there. And then if that is useful to you, perhaps have this, make a copy to this to your Google Drive or have this bookmarked somewhere. Uh, you can also find this and all of the information from the conference at evergreen-ils.org uh, and then you go to the 2021 conference and if you click on the program descriptions it's going to have uh, the videos and then any slides that were provided for all of the sessions so if there's something in there that piques your interest um, Go watch it. I guess is is it's the best way to um, say that. Um, there is also, and I don't want to get too, I don't want to get into certification at all in terms of LEUs and things like that. Uh, this is an approved conference for LEUs. As far as the videos go, you'd probably want to contact Sherry Harris in the uh, library development office to see anything in terms of that. But if you're just going to get information, there's just a wealth of stuff that, that was discussed and um, presented at the international conference. Any questions about that part of, of what I wanted to say here? I cannot overstate how you, I mean, I know it looks like a big wall of text and it is a big wall of text, but as you look in here, um, 
there's just su such a wealth of information. And one thing I will say, and I can't, I don't actually have the ability to to edit this version of it. When you see this right here, what you're going to be, this first thing is going to be your source and we'll take a look at it real quickly. Um, and that's probably not the best definition in, in here. This is Chris's cheat sheet that he basically copied and pasted into here. Um, and so he has the name of the report template that he did and then the displayed fields um, this is going to be the source, uh, the, no, I'm sorry, the source, and then displayed fields and filters, which we're going to look at um, those in just a moment. Again. Okay, I'm going to pop back in here. So as I was going through the um, request for topics sheet that uh, form that was filled out by several individuals. One of the recurring things that came up was more information about cloning reports. And we'll, we'll look at some practical stuff for that in, in just a moment. But we're gonna, we're gonna talk about a, a couple, well, a few different considerations. So, the good part about cloning reports is that you are able to, uh, and I'm going to go to the reporter. You can access it, of course, through the administration menu here on the home page, which that's really tiny. So I'm going to blow it up a little bit. Um, or through the administration menu here. It is not a pretty interface. Again, I just want to make sure to point out that I acknowledge that everybody acknowledges this is not particularly pretty. Um, but cloning reports lets you look through these shared folders, find something that you want to use, and then clone it so that it um, then appears in my folders, in your folders. So then we also have the bad part of cloning those shared reports. Um, the bad is that some of them, a fair number of them are old and uh, they have parameters based on tables that have changed. And so that um, while they may give you some outputs when you clone them, they may not actually be the outputs that you were expecting um, they may not necessarily make sense or they may not work. And it doesn't happen a whole lot, but it's not an incidental, um, it's not an insignificant number of times that it does happen or proportion of times that it does happen. And then we have the ugly, and, and that's the part where we spend, in, in my opinion, the most amount of time is where we find a shared report that we want to um, clone so that we have it in my reports so you have it locally uh, but there's that one little thing that you maybe you want it to display a little bit differently or you want that one more piece of information and then you get into um, changing your base filters and your display filters which we'll look at. And then it becomes a little experimental and you, you may end up at, at the beginning with some stuff that doesn't work as you kind of learn why you're going. Uh, and then you get to a state that you like it and you end up with three versions of the template that didn't work and one that does work and um, it's messy. And then there is the need to go back and clean it up which is something that I spent a little bit of time this morning doing. I probably should have waited, but I was so enthusiastic about getting rid of some stuff that I just did it. So these are things to keep in mind. Uh, there's a lot of good to be done with the cloning of shared reports into your local repository. Um, but there, there's some other stuff that 
it's um it's just part of part of the deal so yeah we're gonna get into that right now after i yeah we're gonna i'm gonna go back because then we're gonna get into some more aspects of shared reports in a second so uh one of the recurring themes in the proposed topics was the ability to um, clone reports that you use regularly so that you don't have to keep searching for them through the shared templates. Um, it is a thing that I highly recommend that you do every single time you find a, re a template that you want to run a report from more than one time. So if there's just this one thing that, that you think that you're interested in for, um, for whatever thing you're doing specifically, but you don't plan to ever use it again. At that point, there, there does need to be some type of internal conversation where you say, are you sure you're never going to use this again? And if you're not sure you're never going to use it again, just assume that you will. And, and then it, then my, my bit of encouragement for cloning it to a local folder becomes um, more meaningful in, in, in that regard as well. So, and I'm going to kind of pick at random, but kind of not pick at random, uh, something in here. And so, there are, of course, just tons and tons of shared reports throughout here. This started since the beginning of Evergreen Indiana, um, this admin uh, shared reports has always been something that was accessible to people running reports. And I apologize too, I'm gonna have to cough, so I'm gonna mute my microphone. Okay, much better. Um, and it has, it has grown over those many years i think we're we are now kind of working toward our 15th year with evergreen uh, indiana which is a little bit mind-blowing but there it is and so this has ballooned and you'll see in here which we've talked about this previously that uh, this is the user interface that's what you ui is standing for there and so we have the XUL or the Zool Runner client, the Zool client, and then we have web staff. And so we know that anything that says web staff, that's the web staff client or the staff client as it is today, is going to be significantly newer than anything with the, the Zool client. And you can see from the create time that that is evidenced there. When I talked about the bad, this is where it often happens when there is a cloning from one of these older um, templates that were built through the Zool client interface. And now when they are um, cloned, they are converted to a web staff uh, user interface. And that conversion is where they can break as the web staff is now trying to look at tables that may have changed. And they could change in a variety of ways. Generally, they haven't been deleted, but there are, um, they may have been disconnected in some ways from, from one another, or they in some cases have been renamed or the tables within them have been renamed. And so there are multiple places um, where that can happen. 
one thing I do want to uh, encourage you to keep in mind is that any change to the database like that, that, that I described, um, that I, yeah, um, is something that the developers and the Evergreen community take really seriously because they know that it affects um, things down the road. And when, when you start messing with uh, a shared database, such as we have, um, it really, it, it can't change very much in terms of its architecture, but sometimes it, it had to. And um, so you may run into that, but hopefully you don't, and some people never do. So in this case, uh, I'm going to do just the basic um, cloning. And that would be that there is, say for some reason, I want this, um, and I don't want, actually want a monthly circ. So I'm just going, I want this total circulation count of items that are owned by a shelving location. Oh, but I want a Zool runner. Yep, we'll go with this one. Okay, well, daily circ. I actually, I think I used to use this when I was at Hagerstown and I would get a daily report on circulation, which that's a lot of, of output that you're managing, but I'm hoping that somebody that took my spot maybe cleaned out all of that output because I did save it all. Okay, so from this shared template, you can see that we're in the shared folders, templates, admin, circulation, by shelving location. I could just run a report from this. And so I've selected this and the top option in here is to create a new report from the selected template. But because I anticipate using this more than once, what I'm going to do so that I can find it easier rather than some either writing down or whatever that path is, I'm going to clone it. And as soon as I say that I'm going to clone it, I'm going to submit this, it's going to ask me for a templates folder that um, is over here. And I'm going to open this up a little bit. And so you can see how those are in here. I do have the option to do a little editing here, but I'm not going to. So in this case, I'm just, I'm going to put this in, let's see if I have, and put it in circulation, trying to be more purposeful about my my editing and I'm going to select that folder and what it's going to do then is, is it's going to open up the template editor and you can see that up here where it was previously a Zool template it's appended this language converted from Zool. This is now going to be a web staff template and then it's also a clone. Now I don't have to keep any of this information up here. Um, you could do, it may be meaningful to you, but because I'm going into a folder that with something that doesn't have this name, um, and I, if I wanted to completely change this name up here, I could. Uh, for the purposes of this, I'm going to change absolutely nothing up here. I'm gonna leave it all like that so that when I save it, um, you'll see that this is an option. If you find exactly what you want, then you can just do a correct clone. Maybe you want to get rid of the clone language, but maybe you don't. Uh, you're not changing any of these things in terms of the sources, the filters, the display fields. Everything is going to be the same. All I'm going to do is I'm going to click save. It is saying just asking if I'm sure. Yes, you can see the template was successfully saved. Now I'm going to go into my shared folders and you can see now, and I, it doesn't have to be in a shared folder. I just happened to put it in the shared folder for this. You can see that that has been copied 
to this um, to the folder, it includes that appended language that I showed you. And now the user interface says web staff. Now, one thing that I, I didn't uh, say about this previously is that before you clone it, I do recommend that you run it um, just from the share template before you put it into your local folders. Now, you don't have to do it. You could go ahead and clone it first and then test it. Um, but if it is one that breaks, it's probably kind of nice to know that beforehand. Uh, the other thing that I will say is you may, and I don't know that I have any in here. Let me see if I can see where I'm actually logged in here. Well, I guess I see all of my stuff, don't I? Um, I don't have any that I know of anymore. Any Zool templates because I, when I started this job, I kind of left behind my my Zool templates. Um, so yeah, so it looks like most of them are all. Um, yeah, they're just all web staff. You may, however, have some some Zool templates, and it, it would be worth looking at them and seeing. Um, most of them still work, and you, if you are getting some recurring report output from them, then you, you know that they still work, uh, but there may be some that do not. So I'm going to pop back up here, and I'm going to go ahead and create a report from that. Um, and this is a daily thing, so this is, I'm going to actually, I'm going to change this. I'm going to pick another library that actually has a circulation desk, which the consortial collection does not. Uh, you would not necessarily have the ability to do that, but because I have some extended uh, visibility in my my stuff I can that's probably a bad date let's do that one mm. I don't want to pick the column Sometimes pivots are helpful, sometimes they're not. Make sure that you select a folder for your report and make sure that you select a folder for your output. Uh, if you are um, logged in with your individual staff login, uh, and it has an email address associated with it, which it should, and which you should. Uh, it's going to populate this with that email address. Um, and if for some reason it doesn't populate it, you can always free text, put it in an email address. If you want the completion notification to be sent to that email, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run that. And we'll pop over here to our output. And you can see that you can see actually some of my failed attempts. So that has run. I'm going to go ahead and view this. So that you can see then that these items were checked out. These counts were checked out on, on this day. So on uh, July the 7th, there were 46 um, items from the juvenile fiction K through two uh, shelving location. Now, one thing I will say about this uh, template in the display fields is, is I would probably want to um, change this because it doesn't really explain what's going on here. This is an actually account 
of individual Cirqueides. This is uh, a shelving location name. And so somebody that didn't necessarily know exactly what that was might be confused. And that that's something that can be changed in the display filters, which I, I will um, show you that in a second. Nope, don't wanna save that. Oh, you, oh, um, you know what? That's my share, that's my, pro my fault. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do that again. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so I went ahead and I clicked on this. And this is going to open this up. Do you see that now, Lisa? Awesome. Sorry about that. I had just the one window because I tend to have some other crazy stuff going on. But uh, so then you can see here um, that I would want this to say cert count. Um, and I would want it to come out for the outputs rather than me just changing it in the the output itself. I, I want it to show up beforehand. So I'm going to. So this would be then kind of the ugly of this. I'm going to close this uh, and I'm going to go back in here. Oh, I see what it did. I need this. So you see this right here that I um, I cloned in here, and I didn't change anything from that shared template. But like I said, looking at the output, I'm not really satisfied with the way that it showed it up. So one of the easy changes that you can do. And this is a point of frustration for me, maybe many others, is that we can't just edit templates at this point. We have to clone them and to get to add or subtract or change something in there. So I'm gonna clone it again. I'm going to pick from here the same folder. I was pretty happy with that folder. And now it comes up here and I do wanna show this to you. So it has now appended another clone to it. I'm going to leave that there because this right here, this, this is the ugly part. It starts getting real messy. Um, we have to start talking about uh, versioning, which is annoying. Um, so all of th those things. What I'm not going to do uh, is I'm not going to change any of the filters. It's pretty happy about that. It has uh, the list of libraries, organizational units. Uh, and then it's for a specific day. So the, the date is what I want, but I don't like the, the column labels in the display field. And you can see here the source path that's going to um, provide you some information. I want this to be, I'm gonna change this column label to shelving location. And then Looking at this, it says it's circ ID, but if I look at the field transform, I can see that I'm doing a thing where I'm counting distinct circ IDs. So what I really want this to be is, um, I'm gonna change this to, um, I'm gonna say items, count of items circ. This is kind of a, a long display thing. I'm going to do it anyway. And you can see that that is in here now. Um, this I'm going to leave, that I'm going to leave. And so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save that template again. You can see this nasty looking title here. I don't know, maybe it's not nasty to other people. It is to me, super annoying. And now I can go in, you can see that I have my clone clone converted from Zool daily circ. And now if I do this, I'm gonna go back and kind of pick on Cambridge city again. So 
So I'm running essentially the exact same thing uh, that I did before. I have named it something different. Otherwise, it, it won't save that new report. I'm going to put it in the same places. Go ahead and run that. I tend to uh, hover like a bit of a tiger parent over my outputs folder. And you can see that that already has run. So we'll go ahead, go ahead and view that output. And now you can see that those column labels have changed to something more meaningful based on uh, the display um, fields and then changing column label there. So it's the exact same information, a little bit more useful. So now I'm going to do part of the, the ugly part again. I'm gonna go back in here. I, first of all, know that I don't want this clone um, because it was the first one that I didn't like the column label. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. And, and it's going to come up here and say, it's gonna delete all of your attached reports uh, and outputs for this template, et cetera, et cetera. If you were doing a recurring report based off of this template, it wouldn't be quite as easy um, we're not going to talk too much about that today, other than you would have to stop that report from recurring, um, and then you could delete the template. So you'd have to delete the report and then delete the template. But in this case, I don't have that. So I'm just going to get rid of it, set it as done it, done. And so now I have this. I also really hate this title. And so I know that this template itself is what I like, um, but I don't, I don't like having all of this stuff in here. I want it to be something that is a little bit more concise without all the chaff. So I, you can't just change the title for a template either, which is, again, a kind of frustrating thing. So we're gonna go in and clone that again. I'm going to put it in exactly the same place. And the only thing that I'm gonna change here is I'm going to get rid of all of that. And it, see, you can see that it, again, appended another uh, open parenthesis clo clone, close parenthesis there. I'm gonna get rid of that. And ta-da, that's what I want it to say. I don't care about when it was updated, none of that stuff. I'm gonna save that. And we, we are not done with the ugly part of this yet because I now have two templates in here that do exactly the same thing. They just have different titles. I'm gonna get rid of the one that I cloned it from. It's going to come up with a thing that again says, it's going to delete the attached reports and outputs, which we know that they're, I mean, I ran the reports and we did see outputs, so we're gonna get rid of that. And then I have, just this nicely named and placed template in there that I can find regularly on a daily thing like this. I would probably set that up as a recurring report, but again, that doesn't really matter. I know that that's, that's a lot right there that I went through if you um, are not familiar with it, um, and maybe a lot anyway, even if you are. So, Are there any questions right now? The other part of the ugly is adjusting the parameters, that being the base filters. We're gonna save that for another day. Um, we, we've talked about it a little bit. And if you go through Chris's pre-conference recording, he's gonna talk about it more. And also the, the um, session outline that it's linked in here has a lot of information about that as well, but we'll, we'll cover it again because it's one of those things that I'm not sure there can be too much training on it. Um, 
So there's that. Okay. So this is the thing that um, I wanted to talk about today. And this has come up multiple times recently. Pardon me while I adjust my position here. Is that uh, we do a lot of things every day because we have to do a lot of things every day. And don't necessarily think about what it would mean if we were not the ones doing the things that were done every day. Um, or, well, I'm just gonna leave it at that. The thing that, that I have really been thinking about recently and always, I, I had a um, IIDGOF file on my desk when I was a director, which stood for if I die or get fired. Um, and I, I put a lot of stuff in there in case so that somebody could open that up and have access to it. It wasn't a perfect succession plan by any means, um, but it was part of this succession plan. And when it comes to reporting, that really is something that we need to be thinking about um, whether we plan to be in our roles forever, um, but knowing that we are mortal, or we don't plan to be in those roles forever because of professional development, uh, career changes, life changes, all sorts of things. And what happens to that, um, the continuity of data that is being collected and reported on for your organization. So uh, one of the things that I would encourage, I'm just going to use the word encourage here, you to do is that as you are um, creating reports uh, and, and creating folders and templates that you consider not only your needs right now, but how that information needs to be related in the future. There are a couple of things that we don't talk about particularly often when it comes to the the initial setup for reports. It doesn't have to be initial setup though. Uh, we talk about the fact that um, you can share folders and you can see I have this folder that is shared here. Uh, manage this. Let's, and there are some things that you can do. In this case, um, I would have the option to unshare the folder, which I'm not going to do. Uh, this folder that you see over here if I click on manage folder, I have the option to, um, I'm gonna actually, this is one of the things, this is an old interface and so it, it doesn't always uh, repopulate things correctly when you go from one thing to the next. Maybe I have shared this folder. I don't know. I can't really see it from the other side. I probably have. Uh, there is the, oh, it might be consortially. Well, that's what I'm going to show you. Um, that you have different options when it comes to how you share uh, these folders. And I would encourage you to use the shared feature. Um, with at least someone. Uh, and this, this kind of gets to be a little bit of a weird thing. There, there are different layers of succession planning. And if we're talking a, about uh, individuals at um, a Cat1 or a local admin level, those, which are pretty specialized and high level, uh, permission levels and, and have needs in terms of uh, the outputs that they're, they're getting, um, you may choose to share um, 
well, I, I guess I don't want to give any suggestions on how you would succession plan for that. But if you have things that have to do with like circulation statistics or um, weeding reports or things like that, that you don't necessarily have to share those templates with the entire consortium. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click to share. So that if you wanted to share something with everybody in the consortium, you would have your folder set like this. So you would have the option to share, and then you would cho choose uh, Evergreen Indiana from there. And that would share this with everybody in Evergreen in Indiana. Everything that is in here, in the shared folders here with a couple, yeah, um, with a couple exceptions are things that have been shared with all of Evergreen Indiana. Um, this, and you can see here, oh, well, I guess it's right there. You can see that I have that shared with Evergreen Indiana. Um, you can see that it will be appended in that manner. But you also have the option to uh, share with your um, entire system. Now, in this case, the consortial collection, it, it's, it's kind of like a one branch library system. And between that, um, these consortium collection and shared system don't matter much. Now, if we're talking about a library that has multiple branches, then we have the shared system and then the, the local library so or the local branch so places like morgan county or hussey mayfield or eckert or any number of other multi-branch systems uh, if you wanted that report to be visible by anyone that was in your system as opposed to at your branch you would select the shared system. If you wanted just to be your branch, then you would um, use your branch level. This comment, I haven't tried to share something with the whole consortium in quite a while, but my recollection is that it used to be we didn't have the permission to do that. That's, that is correct. You can, um, you may not actually even have that option now that I say that, and that Bob had to move stuff to a shared folder so that people outside our local system could see that. Sarah, I'm going to have to say I don't know about that because the last time I tried to share with the consortium, I had the permission to share to the consortium, and that was both kind of early, early on when it was kind of the Wild West, and then more recently, and I had folders that I could put things in kind of in the intermediary, so I'm not really sure um, for new individuals, if that is the case, I'll have to clarify on that. Um, because I do remember there being sometime maybe around between 2016 and 2017, a cleanup project that where there used to be a lot more of these um, shared folders. And that um, that did get cleaned up. So I, I think that you are correct in that in terms of sharing with the entire consortium. Um, and I guess more my point is, I encourage you to share within your local system as often as that it is appropriate uh, because first of all, it helps you delegate some of your tasks in some cases. And that goes back to this organizational collaboration where you can either set up a template um, and other people can access it to run the reports, or you also have the option to, uh, in terms of your, and I'm gonna pop right in here, manage this folder. You can also share, this is a better example. You can also share your reports folders um, 
and if I wanted to hide this, and this is kind of the finicky thing here. So now that I have that, I'm going to go back. You can see that it doesn't have a share. And now if I want to manage that folder, now I can share that folder and it will allow me to select the depth for that. And then you can see that that has been updated there. So, so you can share the reports. This would allow somebody to go in and um, see what the parameters are, perhaps run another report from that where they, uh, because of some the editing features in there. You can also share outputs folders, um, which I'm vaguely embarrassed by this right here, but that's okay. And this would allow people to go into that outputs folder and um, download the stuff that's there or view the stuff that's there without you having to um, send it to them via email, which again, I, I do want to remind you that there are some reports that we run that have that personally uh, identifiable information when we're talking about patrons and we don't want that to go through email because it's, it's a it's a possible way to breach their confidence and, and we don't want that. So by sharing an outputs folder that has those types of things in there, it can serve as that repository for that information that other people can access as needed. So all that to say, please keep in mind as you are doing reports, if they're important to you, they're going to be important to someone else down the road. And what are the mechanisms that you have at your disposal to uh, plan for someone other than you having access to either the templates, the reports, or the output, and or the, the out output, it could be all of those things. Sarah, I'm going to follow up with Bob on that, and I will uh, send that information out uh, just to clarify on the consortially shared stuff. Um, and I'm writing that down. Okay. So um, I'm going to grab this link real quick. If you are here, which most of you are here, if you can uh, essentially check in there, that way I will have a record of you being here and I can get uh, LEU sent out as appropriate. Yes, Sarah, exa that's exactly what I was thinking as I was writing down. There are definitely advantages and disadvantages um, to being able to share cons to the whole of the Evergreen Consortium. And, and I fall like right in the middle because I feel like the advantages are so huge and the disadvantages are such a pain. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely one of those areas where we all work together to find the best way through uh, and, and grace gets applied pretty, pretty liberally on all of us. So if you can fill out uh, the attendance sheet and then um, there is also the link to uh, the topic questionnaire, questionnaire, which is essentially if there's something that you want us to take a look at in terms of talking about future um, interest group meetings, please fill that out. It's always available to you. The next meeting is going to be on Tuesday, October the 5th, and it'll be at 9 Central Time, 10 Eastern Time. Same bat time, same bat channel. And if you have something that um, is kind of rolling around in your brain that you didn't feel 
that that you really wanted to have discussed today and it wasn't, please do shoot me an email and I will uh, do my best to follow up with you uh, today, if at all humanly possible, and uh, tomorrow if it's not humanly possible. Thank you everybody for being here. It is good to, to have a room of people, even if it's a virtual room. Have a great day. And I will have the video also uh, on YouTube pretty soon.